Yo, what's poppin' guys, Sizzle here, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you by far the best way to use any shaders, you know, CRT, upscaling, whatever, uh, also filters, depending on what you call them, but generally they're called shaders. Any shaders with any app, as long as you're on Windows. This does only work with Windows 10 and up, so 10 and 11. If you're on Windows like 7 or something before, it won't work for you either. If you're on Linux or Mac, this won't work for you. But if you're on Windows, uh, let's get going with the install process. So the first thing we want to do is go to the link in the description, uh, mouse and misses shader glass, github repo, it's where he stores all the code and stuff. We want to scroll down a little bit, go down to the requirements section, or it says if the app reports missing libraries, please install this. Just click on that, click the .exe file, hit I agree, hit install, and install it. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to show it off here, but that's all you have to do, install that. Once that's installed from Microsoft, we're going to go over on the right here to releases and then make sure you see that green latest bubble and get the winx64 zip file. Uh, I'm gonna drag that out onto the desktop for now, just for you know, the sake of this tutorial, it's a little bit easier that way. Boom, uh, just extract that into a folder using you know, whatever extracting thing you have. And then just open up the folder, double click shader glass exe, and it should already be running. Now for you guys uh, watching this video, you'll see absolutely nothing there. And that's because OBS is a problem recording it, right? When I go through the menu, the menu things show up, but I'm gonna go show off how to fix that for those who also plan on using OBS to record, maybe stuff with filters on it. And for those people, I would warn you, shaders look way worse when you record them through OBS most of the time. Uh, so yeah, from here, we're gonna go to window and then actually pick whatever window we wanna use it with. So in my, my case, I'll just temporarily set this to Dolphin. And you can see it instantly shows up, but now it's the entire screen. Uh, it's probably using a shader that you don't like. You can see like that's the whole that's the whole screen, one to one copied. Generally, don't want that. What you want to do is go from output mode from clone to glass, and that way it only copies the parts of the window you can see. You can see when I'm on a part that shows the desktop but not the window. It's literally just a black screen. Uh, and also something worth noting is whenever you have like edge or something blocking it. It'll work just fine, but you can't click on stuff because it'll be trying to click edge. And to be able to click on stuff, you just go from window, change it from solid to click through. If you don't want to be able to click through it, don't do that. But click through is generally what you want most of the time. Uh, and yeah, I'm just going to go minimize this for now to be able to actually use this and show things off. But you can see it's already working. We already have some type of CRT filter applied, whatever the default is. Uh, and now I'm going to show you how to change which shader or filter you're using. So I'm just going to shader, then choose. And you'll see we have all the different options from RetroArch. Uh, I think you can get some more as well if you really need to, but RetroArch is so many, you probably will never need anything else. I'm going to open the CRT section because that's what I'm interested in using. And I'll just show off the three that I like to use the most and a way to kind of configure them. Uh, so the big one most people like to use is CRT Royale here. You just click it, it already has it selected. It looks really bad on OBS, but trust me, this looks way better on my screen. Uh, to configure it further, all you have to do is go to shader, then parameters, and you'll have all the different options for configuring the shader. Uh, in my case, the only thing I really care to change is the black borders that are on the screen. I don't like that, so I'm going to scroll down until I see the section either about curvature or border, and just turn that to zero. And now you can see there's there's no, you know, nothing in the edges, nothing in the corners. Uh, Another one I like to use, and this is probably my favorite one to look at, but one I won't use when I'm recording, is CRT Matthias. Uh, and then same thing here, get a parameters, change that curvature to zero. And then this one looks amazing when you're actually using it on real stuff. It looks awful on OBS, and there's not really a good way to fix that. And then the one that I'll probably use when I'm recording stuff that looks kind of okay on OBS is ZFast CRT HD Mask. This one's also the most lightweight, so if, it, if you have a lower end computer, this is the one you want to be using, CFast CRT and ZFast CRT HD mask. There's a few options on there as well you can change, but generally I don't really touch them because they're completely fine. Uh, anyway, once you've got your share selected, once you've got all that going, you have a few other options you can change. I generally don't mess with any of them, but you can change them if you know what you're doing and you care to change them. Uh, but yeah, that's all you have to do for there. Something worth noting, though, is when you make an application bigger, right, so if I make Dolphin bigger like this, it kind of breaks things. Um, the way to fix that is pretty simple. Go from input window, change it to, like, anything else, and then just change it straight back to what you were recording. Uh, and then, obviously, you have to re-enable 
glass mode and then resize it. It's kind of obnoxious, but this is only a problem you have if you're recording with OBS. You'll also notice the game was running, which I accidentally minimized everything. Love when you do that. Uh, <laughs> but you'll also notice the game was running slower when we first cloned it. And that's because when we're using output mode clone, the game is going to be really, really laggy. This uses a lot of processing power, especially if you're using a very high resolution. In my case, I have a 2K monitor, which actually does make things laggy, even with an older thing going on. So make sure you change that mode from clone to glass, no matter what you plan on doing. Uh, another thing that can really help with having this run better is something that I can't show off on OBS, and this is kind of the, the problem with recording with OBS specifically. Uh, when you go to desktop and then pick a whole display, it will actually work on the entire display, which is amazing. It's the best way to use it. It has like no lag. It's great, but you can't record that mode with OBS. But this is the recommended mode. If you're just using this for fun, using this on your own, you're not like a YouTuber or whatever, go to desktop and then pick the whole display and then use the filter on the whole display. It'll look amazing. Uh, yeah, the only other real thing worth mentioning is we can make this full screen, right? So first off, we in processing make sure enable global hotkeys is on so that they're there uh then we go to what is it somewhere around here oh yeah full screen you can see that's bound to control shift g so make sure you have that memorized because once you click this it's kind of hard to click off but now it's applied to my entire screen i'm not sure how visible that really is uh on obs but it's it's literally covering my entire screen uh, another thing I can do is, you know, make Dolphin itself full screen, and then actually I have to go change the window, so I'm going to press Control shift g to make it not full screen again. Pick the window, rescan, find the new Dolphin that just showed up, Super Monkey Ball. Uh, it will now be really laggy, but make that glass again, and then go to full screen. And there you go, now I have a CRT filter on my entire game. Uh, I'm sure this one's actually showing up a little bit better over uh, stuff for you guys. But yeah, uh, now I'm going to go show off a nice little area that kind of shows off, you know, what CRT filters are good for. And for those who maybe are less sold on actually using a CRT filter, just figured it'd be nice to kind of demo it, show it off in a smaller specific area. So I'm going to go do that. Uh, I'll go boot up a game with this all running and I'll see you in a minute. Post recording sizzle here. I just realized I forgot to mention you can also save the shader and, and all your other settings by going to processing, hit save profile as, and then saving it. And then you can load them via load profile so that you don't have to change all your settings every single time you load up. Uh, as far as I know, there's no way to load it all up by default, but it is at least just two clicks versus like 40. So it's definitely worth mentioning. So here is, in my opinion, one of the best places to be shown it off. That's a uh, sticker bush serenity by Fafina, I think, in Mario Kart Wii. It's a nice little custom stage. You'd see on the left side, we can see the sharp edges of the wind and stuff. And it doesn't look bad, mind you. If I like take this away, this still looks amazing. But when you compare the left to the right, I don't know how well OBS is picking this up, but like it, it smooths the edges while still keeping the whole image just about the same which makes things feel a lot more natural, and my opinion look a lot nicer. Uh, by far the best showcase of CRT filters, in my opinion, though, that I've found is a little bit later in this stage. I'm going to do a bit of driving. You kind of see this applying, you know, the shader glass thing live. See what it kind of looks like, see what it's kind of up to. Um, it's this gator right here. When you just see this gator normally, it's just like, oh, that's like a low poly, you know, really bright gator guy. And then when you put the CRT on him, I mean, it, it kind of looks the same, but he looks more more real, more like bouncy, more cartoonish. Uh, maybe it's just nostalgia speaking. Maybe I'm just speaking out of my ass. But for me, it looks way nicer. You know, this this HD low poly thing versus the nice CRT filter version. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. That was all the different options, all the different ways you can configure stuff. Right, if I go full screen this, you can see this is now Dolphin with the whole thing. Uh, you can see if you're using this with like a browser or something, I wouldn't recommend it because the text becomes just unreadable with like 90% of filters. But using this with games, it always just looks great. It looks absolutely astonishing. Generally, the text is big enough where it doesn't affect things. And then the game itself will just look a lot nicer than normal. And uh, yeah, with all that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Leave any questions, comments, or concerns in the comments below. 
Uh, make sure, like I said, if you have extra money and you really like this project, go support this guy on Patreon or itch.io or whatever. He has a lot of different ways to give him money. And he deserves it, man. This is a really, really, really cool project. By far my favorite way to use shaders. And it's kind of cool, too, because what you can do is, since OBS has a problem uh, recording it when you swap to desktop mode, I can now play with shaders on and then record without shaders on. And it's, it's great. I get the benefits of shaders without the issues that recording shaders tends to bring. Because generally, recording shaders on OBS is an absolute nightmare. Uh, just recording shaders in general is really, really, really hard to do. Uh, so, you know, being able to use shaders, see things visually nicer on your screen, while still recording normal gameplay and have the gameplay actually look solid and not take up, like, 7 gigabytes, for example, for a two-minute clip uh, when I tried recording with shaders last time. That's just a really great thing, and uh, I'm, I'm glad that this program exists so I can go do that.